So I came home from London with four boxes here. And I, well, I got the outer boxes out of the way because nobody looks cool opening boxes on camera, but four boxes, four watches. Let's unbox and get a quick look at each, shall we? All right, first up is a watch that I've actually already unpackaged, and that is this watch right here, which is the Lobini. And this was the one that has the amazing movement. The band that was on it was a double clasp dress band that I positively despised, in truth. But the main showpiece of this watch is really this gorgeous micro rotor movement. Just cool, done to a crazy high degree, and um, it's gorgeous. Very, very cool. I kind of wish the watch was upside down and that was the front. has such a very plain front, but same movement as in some of the Baltic watches, among others. And um, I can't wait to wear this some more and put it on a brown strap. This was the best strap that I had kind of kicking around right now. But that's that. More coming from this lovely guy, the Labini. Next up is a watch that I took a flyer on because I've been looking at a lot of vintage 36 millimeter watches. I was very intrigued by the Baltany. Now, you may have noticed that these are coming out of their packaging very easily, and that's because I have totally opened these already. I got home, and while I was spent and not feeling camera ready, I could not resist opening up these ones. Now, this is a 36 millimeter automatic bubble back homage from the folks at Baltany. And the finishing on this is just adorable. Just really quite awesome. I um, It's small though, and if you look on my wrist, it's actually not a bad look here, right? But what's interesting is because this is a NATO band, um, not NATO, but like a leather style band with NATO, it sits higher up off of my arm than it would if this was a classical band. And the challenge with that is it just makes it seem even more proportionally tiny, lifted off of my arm. It's a very nice band. I'm very impressed with it. I'm very impressed with like every single thing about this watch. But because of, I think, the band, the it sits really high on my wrist, and it feels just proportionally weird. So I already have had time, thanks to Amazon, to order a thin band there, a normal standard 18 millimeter band, because I didn't have any around to then put on this and switch it to this. And I think it'll match the kind of the colors and everything with it. It probably would have been better to have a lighter tan like it came with, but the preview photos for these bands are never exactly what show up. This was supposed to be an aged, really cool looking vintage band and alas it isn't. But this Baltany is just, I love the color. I love the amount of Fotina to the dial. You know, it's small. I do wish this was like a 38, but there's something kind of cute about a bubble back, very slim, very stylish 36 that, you know, I think this will stick around for a bit. And last and least expensive are two Paganis. The familiar Pagani design box. And in this situation, it is an homage to a very popular watch that was to the moon. And this is a very cool, very nice Speedmaster homage. And I I like this a lot out of the thing. It's got a jangly, you know, five-piece kind of five-link bracelet as it goes here. It's a little jangly. It's a little sharp on the edges, but still has some micro-adjust. It is a much-improved version or depiction of a bracelet compared to the typical, if you've had a Pagani design, the the band that's at almost every single one of them. This is kind of a different take on that. This watch, super cool, super classy. I actually wore very recently a uh, Speedmaster Professional just to get a feel for it, the size, everything. And this does a really good job of getting you close there. Um, because that VK64 Mega Quartz movement, it's also very thin, which is Pretty cool. I haven't taken things off the end caps. See, so yeah, I was unboxed. I did all take all the plastic off this and the stickers off the protection, but take a look at that. That's amazing. And it is a really, I don't know if you can see it here, there's a nice dome to that sapphire crystal display that makes it seem vintage and a little bit cooler. 
I put this side by side with my um, Pagani Daytona. And if you see this, this is a very flat piece of glass. So it looks cool, but it's very Daytona, you know? Whereas this, and a watch that's known for its bubbly glass, you can see there, super cool, super neat, and very much highlights kind of the differences between these two somewhat similar takes on a Chrono. Anyway, more to come on those. Um, the band that is on that Lobini, actually, I stole off of this Pagani design. There's a video coming for this sometime in the near future, um, but this is the main show, and so far, I... I'm very, very, very impressed with this one. Last but not least is this watch from Pagani Design. And this was a spontaneous buy towards the end of the 1111 sale. But this is their chrono looking pilot with, you know, a silvery, very light silver face with blue indicators and blue hands on it. But what's neat about this one is the small hands to be expected. And on the right hand side, you have a power reserve meter. And like you can watch quickly as I wind it, that power reserve meter will actually increase. Um, except for the fact that it's a screw down crown. And so I just screwed down the crown all the way and it stopped. But now that the crown is undone there. You can actually see the power reserve ever so slightly. And the other thing you can do is you can shake it. And I will shake it like this. Hold on, look here, it's about the nine o'clock on this dial right there, that little dial. If I shake it, 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 you can see that it moved down there. So now it's slightly above 25%. Very, very cool. This had a logo on the picture that said Pi Time above the automatic on the bottom there. They have made the Probable smart move to ditch the Pi Time branding and just kind of clean it up. But overall, pretty cool. Neat faux alligator band, which is plenty all right. It's actually softer and more pliable than I expected it to be with a leather backing on it. Cool little Pagani design um, engravement on the, the handle there. Very, very cool. So yeah, four watches, unbox. Exciting things to come home to, super excited. London was a great trip. Uh, try and put a highlight video for that up in the next day or so. Visited some high-end boutiques, got a lot of window shopping videos mostly, and some cool B-roll walking around. Great time, inspiring though, and really cool to see, you know, the best watches in the world, price-wise anyway, you know, the most sought after across everything, but also, you know, being able to appreciate the ones that I had and, and the fact that some of the prices were just ludicrous, especially in London, central London, the high end shops, you, know, you go there and see 50, 70, $80,000 APs and, you know, Panerai's and some crazy, 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 crazy stuff at the high end of the market. And I don't know, I still smile when I look down at my wrist with whatever I was wearing that day. And I wasn't wearing anything crazy expensive. I did wear like, I think I brought a Seiko, a Laco, um, a Swatch, <laughs> one of my moon watches. Actually, I brought one. Pagani design as well, just for the giggles, um, to see if somebody would steal it off my wrist. Not that I would be psyched about being assaulted and having something stolen, don't get me wrong, but there would be a small part of me that said, and ha, you just took $75, $80 for the watch, which then I would be bummed, along with probably a nicer strap that I put on it. So I digress. Anyway, this has been the Nick Time Watches. I've been Nick, you've been you, and just remember, it doesn't always take a lot of money to put something on your wrist that makes you smile. Take care.